around and think bad things are going on. We've just had another nasty situation in Manchester yesterday. And uh, the visibility of such things is just so high that some days it's difficult to actually take, take a broader look. Uh, if you look at the statistics, just pure statistics, pure numbers, the number of people who get killed in uh, terrorist attacks is actually way, way, way down the bottom of the list. Um, car accidents and heart disease and cancer and pollution, um, those are the things that are killing most of us and those are the things that we should be um, really directing our attention to, which is not to say that we shouldn't be looking at ways to reconcile with those who, who have violently different um, views of what life on this planet should look like. On a daily basis, ordinary people spend their time worrying about things that are not likely to kill them. They're not thinking about the things that actually are likely to wreak, wreak havoc in our lives very, very soon. And this is, this is where, where social innovation and social entrepreneurship come in, where people with ideas um, can make a difference uh, and do. I work in uh, broadly understood innovation and creativity on a daily basis. That's my day job. It is obvious to anyone who actually takes uh, more than a cursory look at, uh, at this field that uh, it is now easy to access things we need and get done the things we need to get done. It's easy to get money. Crowdfunding is well established and there are new really exciting ways of raising funds uh, just uh, becoming becoming more uh, broadly known um, around the subject of cri cryptocurrencies and, and creating your own currency if you like. It's easy to find people um, all you have to do is uh, send out a message on, on Facebook or Twitter or any of the, the other damn things that we, that we use on a da daily basis. Yes, of course, we have uh, 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 bubbles to deal with and information bubbles are possibly one of the areas that social entrepreneurship uh, should be concentrating more on than it has been because um, yeah, you know the old saying, be careful of your thoughts because they become your ac actions, be caref careful of your actions beca because they become, become your habits, be caref careful of your habits because they become your reality. Uh, so information bubbles are certainly um, an area that uh, social entrepreneurship can attack. Um, but then if you think about it, it is actually not that difficult to um, deal with such seemingly complex complex problems um, it's easy to find people who know uh, how these problems originate in the first place and may have ideas uh, on, on how to solve them uh, it's easy to get um, uh, information information is everywhere um, if you can't find it today uh, tomorrow it will be most certainly available if you if, if you ask to to people, you can probably find find out anything that you need to know to, to, to create a project. So really, social innovation, as far as I'm concerned, um, is not about innovation. Social innovation is about what's in the the heads of people you work with, and the, the in the heads of uh, people who are important to you and what's in your own head because uh, social innovation is not an area of business that is particularly um, easy it is very demanding not that business in general is easy it is damn difficult to run any kind of company that is uh, run responsibly and successfully but because we're dealing with um, an area that is so close to us so intimately close to us uh, we're dealing with lives of people, we are affecting um, how people think, what they do, what they end up thinking is good for them. The, uh, the responsibility that comes with that, of course, is, 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 is huge. Um, on an ordinary level, uh, 
um, on an ordinary company level. Um, of course, leaders are already taking it long, hard looks at how they run their companies and um, are realizing that uh, a responsible uh, company, a, a company that is run responsibly, um, has, has to go a few steps beyond uh, CSR. Uh, certainly has to go a few steps beyond simply throwing some money at a, at a, at a good cause. Uh, you need to do more because that's too simple. Uh, uh, the issues that um, we as a civilization have to deal with are so many and, and so complex that uh, business as a species really ha has to broadly uh, um, adopt a, a, an attitude of um, we have to do more um, and not simply because um, we want to be good corporate citizens but it's actually good business to be good corporate citizens it makes perfect sense um, on a branding level uh, there's nothing better than, than um, people thinking that you run a company that actually contributes because a brand is not a logo. A brand is what's you know in, pe in people's heads. A brand is what people think you stand for. So if you, as an organisation, make sense to them, so to speak, uh, of course they are likely to, to buy from you more than uh, from uh, from your competition. Um, people have to like you, and in order for people to like your company, well, your company has to do more than simply provide good products and services. That's kind of the baseline. Um, anybody who wants to stay in business has to provide good products and services. You have to do, do more. Uh, and especially uh, in the context of uh, people who are, you know, younger than me, <laughs> um, who look to corporate leaders as more than simply corporate leaders. But they want to see people who run companies as um, more than simply providers of, of, of goods and services. They want to know that you're not buying your resources from dodgy sources. Uh, they want to know that uh, on a really basic, basic level you're, you're, you're paying fair wages to your, to your em employees wherever, wherever they happen to be. All these really basic things. Now if you uh, step back a little from this introduction and look at uh, your own situation, um, you may realize that actually, well, there are things that uh, you can uh, plug into, there are activities that you can pick up, uh, there, are, there are projects you can create that are good for your community, but also make perfect business sense. And these can be large things, these can be changing the educational systems for entire regions or entire nations. I have friends who, who, who are doing this. Uh, or this can be a simple act, realizing that uh, there's some damn rubbish lying around in the uh, in the forests of of, of uh, where you live, and maybe uh, that's not good enough. You know, maybe something needs to be done about it. Uh, there are so many things that you can do. Uh, it's simply a matter of stepping into the right mindset. And the right mindset is one of balancing what is practical, uh, what is inspiring, and what you want to do, uh, putting all those things together and figuring out how best to create a project that answers the needs of your community or your country or the globe uh, and uh, one where you can put your skills to, uh, to best use. This of course is not, not simple um, or rather I should say this is simple but it's not easy. Uh, the simplicity of it um, comes down to sitting down and being really honest with yourself. Uh, making a list of your strengths, making a list of your weaknesses, and uh, making a list of the things that you can do to address the weaknesses and use the strengths. Um, all kinds of education are, are um, available, so if you're um, lacking in a, a technical area, for example, um, if you have uh, skills in some areas but you don't have skills in one area which is crucial to the project, well, you can either learn, pick up 
you know, pick up the skill. You can you can you can uh, learn yourself. Or, uh, as I said at, at, at the beginning, it's easy to find people. It's easy to find people to to, to complement what what you're doing. It's actually easy to find people to complement your skills. Um, you just have to um, work hard, find the right community, find the right group of people of you know a similar mindset. There are communities around the globe where um, open, creative, dynamic, dynamic people pop up like mushrooms after a summer's rain. Something that was created as, a, as an interesting experiment has absolutely blossomed, exploded uh, all around the world and there are TEDx communities in uh, virtually all main, major cities and plenty of, of rural communities as well. And um, the attractive thing about those is that um, they gather people who are very, very different from each other, but they share a few key characteristics. And uh, probably the most important of those is a, a openness to, to, to learning, openness to uh, collaborating with people different uh, from themselves. An important thing to remember is that um, it is very, very difficult to get things done on your own. Uh, as much as we would like to think that we are the knights in shining armor, conquering new lands, uh, bravely facing you know, adversity, well, be that as it may, uh, it's easier in a team. Um, I, I'm sure many of you have uh, seen the, uh, the proverb, uh, if you want to go fast, go alone, if you want to go far, go together. Uh, the idea is um, working in a team allows you to extend extend your 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 your, your options, uh, extend your possibilities. Um, working in a team means that you get different perspectives on 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 the project, um, on the problem. Um, it means that uh, different resources can be drawn on resources that you individually may not have access to. Um, be it for cultural reasons or simply for logistical reasons where you just don't know the right people. Um, and this is not just in case of, um, in case of uh, you know, humanitarian aid in a foreign country. Uh, this is uh, working with people similar to yourself living in your own city. Um, these days, many people, I'd say most people, are plugged into many communities all at once. Uh, it is unusual and you have to travel really far um, to find people who are only ever present within their own community. Um, and even there, there you will find many, many contradictions. Um, most people are plugged into many communities which means that they can draw on many resources. Um, which means that you can get whatever project you're, you're, you're thinking of faster, more effectively, more, your work is more efficient, you're, you're not uh, doubling, up, doubling up resources, you're not uh, uh, asking the same questions that have been asked many times before. There are some um, basic uh, common problems that people come across when uh, creating projects, really of any, of any kind. and. Um, Invariably, they come down to, to um, not being able to ask someone the right question at the right time. Be, really quite regardless of, of what the project is. Um, if it's to do with money, if it's to do with the management, if it's to do with resources, um, planning, processes, doesn't really matter. Um, so if you extend the idea of a team beyond simply the, the, the people with whom you work on a daily basis and if you take it and extend it a layer further then it's really valuable to build out your team um, with uh, people who have experience in areas that are somehow adjacent to what you're doing who can give you advice. Um, in my experience people who have um, reached some kind of a level of, of uh, professional attainment, call it whatever, uh, they are usually very, very happy
to, to share their experience, share their knowledge, share their contacts. Um, all you have to do is ask. And uh, if your project is one that uh, these people consider to have m merit, then uh, it'll be easy to get the right introductions and the right information. The, the difficulty in solving these, these issues more often than not lies in the mindset of the people who deal with the issue and the people who may be looking at ways to solve the issue. Um, this is something that has fascinated me for, for quite, quite some time. How, how to approach problems, or specifically problem solving, um, in such a way that uh, we end up creating teams and organizations and projects which work on an organic level, um, where people function to the best of their ability where um, the need for constant hierarchical oversight is not there because hierarchical oversight uh, really is not efficient. If I, as a project leader, have to tell every single member of the project team what they have to do every hour of the day, nobody is ever going to get anything done. So in order for uh, projects to run smoothly, you have to have the right people, obviously, and then, equally obviously, you have to give them enough autonomy to be able to make decisions, to learn as they go, because if we're solving problems for, to which we don't have solutions, um, we don't have cookie-cutter um, lists of, of, uh, of, um, uh, of solutions. We can only create them as we go. In order to do that, we have to learn. And learning means uh, um, trial and error, means sometimes actually lots of uh, failures along the way in order to find the one solution that works. This requires a few things. From the leader or the leadership, it requires a, de a degree of, of trust in the people. Obviously, if they have selected the wrong people and they trust them, um, that is not fair on the people and it's not fair on the, on the leaders. So the responsibility of a leader is to select, select the right people and then trust them to make mistakes uh, but make mistakes and learn from them. The thing about innovation, it is in novation. We are doing something new. We are doing something that hasn't been done before. Ergo, there are no recipes. Um, we have to find these things as we go. The other thing that needs to happen is um, within the organization, as it gets bigger, Invariably, they do. If the project is successful, the organization grows because you need more people to do more jobs. Uh, if the organization is not growing, uh, that means that you're either not growing the, to the full potential of the project or maybe you're not doing it right. Within the organization, there need to be people with a very unusual job, people who change your organization from the inside. I call them mycelians. And that this comes from mycelium, which is the root structure of, of mushrooms. It's an extraordinary thing. It grows through the substrate, changes the soil in preparation for new plant life to, to, to grow above. Um, mycelians, well, it's, um, it's a job description. We create new job, job descriptions all the time. Um, Scrum Master. Is a, is a job description. If you know anything about uh, software development, you know that a Scrum Master has a particular function within a software team. Uh, so uh, I'm not doing anything you know, unusual. I'm simply creating a job, job description that's, that's right for the times. Uh, Mycelians function as um, conduits of information through the organization and as inspirers of, 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 of people to be the best they, they, they can be. They connect people and ideas, they um, transmit those uh, ideas through, through the company. Um, and really, any, um, any organization that's larger than a few dozen people uh, needs individuals like that. Because the moment you step beyond 50, 
60, 80 people on the team. You are entering into a territory of um, um, communication becoming a bit of a problem because it's not as smooth a, a, as it was when, when there were on, only 10 of you but it needs to be smooth or perhaps um, smoother because otherwise you uh, start to get bogged down in, in procedures and, uh, and bureaucratic thinking and uh, decision making takes forever and all of a sudden you're not as effective or as um, efficient as you, as you would like to be. Uh, people charged with the responsibility of being such conduits of ideas and energy through the organization will help the organization move through, you know, through projects, through, through, through the processes that it needs to manage a lot more smoothly. This is an area that I've been looking at uh, closely for a couple of years and um, I've put what I've learned into, into a book which deals specifically with uh, the mechanics of how the mycelians may uh, look at the, the, the work they have to do and the mechanics of how you continue to instill innovation thinking in organizations that may perhaps uh, be leaning towards becoming um, more bureaucratic and more hierarchical. The book is The Pig, not The Lipstick, and uh, this idiom of uh, putting lipstick on a pig really illustrates very well the situation that is quite often found in organizations where um, everybody talks about innovation and uh, everybody goes to uh, funky conferences and um, uh, awards are given out and, and uh, uh, hands are sh shaken and op photo opportunities ensue but no real innovation actually, t actually takes, takes place. So I'm interested in the pig as in the hard work of um, instilling innovation thinking in organizations and not the lipstick which is the uh, the glossy shiny um, sexy stuff that we see in magazines and, and on television that actually doesn't doesn't really help help anybody accomplish anything innovative